In this video, I want to cover the renamer. Uh, I spent a lot of time on it. Uh, kind of really perfected it when I was working at 2012. I still have a lot that I want to do to it, but for right now, I think I'm pretty much... Uh, it's it's in production ready. It works the way it's supposed to. So here I have a bunch of objects. So I'm just going to select one, and I'm going to go ahead and run the hyper renamer. Okay. When I have one object selected, I get this uh, quick rename floater. All right. So let's say the character's name is um, um, Orca, because I was working on it, something like that. The next thing that I have here is usage. So it could be a rig, it could be a mesh. Let's say it's a rig, uh, and let's say that it's the head. You might notice that uh, I just typed in head. I didn't put any caps or anything, and you can see that it automatically capitalized it. The other thing that's really cool is uh, it will not allow spaces. And when you do spaces, it just puts a dash. So you can put uh, this is the head. All right. And it keeps everything nice and neat. Same thing with Orca. Orca is the name. Okay. Because what separates each part of an object's name is underscores. So if I say scale or something like that, attach, you can see that each main section is separated by an underscore. Dashes can separate these other uh, individual parts. Okay. Um, now each of these is customizable. Okay. If you look at the object name now, orca, rig, this scale, you know, whatever. Okay. They are customizable by using the hyper ini editor. Okay. Here you can see. Uh, the different array values that I can put. So usage, usage is, um, oops, sorry. Usage is right here. This is what you're using it for. It could be either the rig, the mesh, a cloth, uh, you know, the, the main thing that you're using it for. Uh, a biped, uh, an extra butt part, um, morph, skin morph. This is the main category of what it is, okay? The reason I'm showing you that is, um, depending on what you... Uh, I shouldn't have closed that. Hold on. Depending on what you have selected here, that will decide what will be available here. So if I say BIP, all I have available is control. If I say cloth, then I have collision or, or driver objects, okay? And whatever you put here will de define what's going to be available here. The easiest way for me to show you that is here with the INI uh, editor. So I can put stuff here, you know, like um, test. And now when I pull this pull down, you'll see all of these choices available here. If I pick rig, you'll see, okay, under rig, I have these three different choices right now. And these three choices will show up here. So if I pick, say, attach, there's nothing because I'm not using it. Uh, but I'll show you how it works, okay? So let's say I, I, I'm going to pick test. There's nothing here. So uh, te uh, this one, this two, this three, okay? So now when I come here, I have this one, two, and three. So I'm going to pick this one and say um, that one, that two, and that three. Now... When I come here, you'll see I have that one, two, and three. So let's say I take two and go this, that, one, this, that, two. Okay. You kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. So if I, I'll hit right. Okay. And then I'll close it. And let's do this. Let's rename this again. So let's say test uh, arm, let's say. So since I picked test, I have this one two and three so I'll say this one since I picked that now I have that one two and three um, so I'll pick that two you can see I have this and that so whatever I put in the INI editor shows up here so the minute I pick say rig it all gets erased because those aren't available under rig okay sounds a little complicated but it's not trust me uh, now, if you select multiple objects and you run the same script, you'll get this, what I call the multi-renamer, okay? Uh, search and replace functions, which are case-sensitive or not. 
fully replace text. So let's say I do this and go uh, orca rig rig sphere. So I'm going to take these here and I'm going to rename, totally change the name to that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to append a number to that. So I'm going to give it a padding of if it's if it's if I leave padding at zero, it's automatic. So if there's zero to nine objects, it'll just be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If there's ten, then it'll go you know zero one, zero two, zero three, all the way to ten. If there's a hundred, it'll be zero zero one, zero zero two. Okay, and I can change the start number and the step amount. So I'm going to go ahead and make this two. So there's a padding at two and say append. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted a dash. So what I can do is here go to crop text and I can crop the start over the end. And I can crop it, you know, any number of characters. So I'm just going to look at these and say, let's get rid of those numbers and say end. Hit that twice and get rid of those last two numbers. So let's say I want to do, uh, put a dash, okay. And then I'm going to hit append. So I can append a number. And then finally, I'm just going to put uh, CTRL for control. I'm just making it up as I go. Suffix. And that's it. I can also do caps, lower cap all, upper cap, cap after underscore, after space, first letter, all that. I just check these and then just hit capitalize. And then when I'm done, I can hit apply, which is going to apply the naming and then say close. And if I look at the names, you'll see sphere one, two, three, four, and that. Okay? It's really cool. I use it a lot. There should be no real problems, with, no bugs with it. Um, one thing that someone at 2012 made me do, which I thought was cool after the fact, is they, I created it so that it would have, um, it would change the selection. So you wouldn't have to close it every time to change, to do different names. Okay. And that's the hyper renamer.